Hey guys, this is Raja and welcome back to another new video. So in this video, we're going to learn about visual scripting in Unity using Volt. So Volt is now part of Unity and they have released it for free. So now Volt is available for free to all Unity users. So in this video, let's learn how to do visual scripting with Volt in Unity. So let's get started. First of all, you need to go ahead and download Bolt. So I'm going to go to my Unity Asset Store. You can go to Google and search for Unity Asset Store or directly go to assetstore.unity.com. And from here, you can simply go and search for Bolt. And from the results, simply click on this Bolt, this one. And you will see the bold visual scripting will be here and i have already downloaded it that's why it's asking me to open in unity you can simply download it and then click on open in unity but when you click on open in unity it doesn't open directly it simply opens up the package manager window so what you can do is alternatively you can simply open up your unity software and there you can go to window and from there you're going to go to package manager and make sure to download it before this otherwise this is not gonna work so here in package manager by default your in project packages will be reloaded from here you can simply go to my assets and once you go to my assets it will show all the packages that you have downloaded from the unity asset store so once my assets loads you will see all the assets that you have downloaded from the asset store now you can simply go ahead and click on bold search for bold and you will see bolt will be shown in your case as you can see currently bolt is shown so from here as you can see i have already downloaded it so now i'm going to click on import so i'm going to click on import and you will see bolt will be imported click on import again and bolt will be imported so now bolt has been imported i'm going to go ahead and close this window now if you go to this assets folder you will see here we have some install bolt tab inside this we have bolt 1.0 for one this one and this one so this is dotnet 4 version and this is dotnet 3 version so we're going to use the dotnet 4 version another thing you can do is uh, you can go to your edit project settings player and from here you can set your app compatibility to dotnet 4.x okay now simply close it now we're gonna go and install both so we're going to go to this tools option here as you can see here we have the tools option from here you can simply click on install bolt now in your case is every, if everything happened just after installing then you don't need to do anything else but if doesn't if it doesn't happen then you need to simply go to tools and click on install bolt click on import and you will see it will get imported so from here you can select all and click on import so now as you can see bolt has been imported and the bolt setup wizard is showing up here we're going to simply click on next and then it will ask us what kind of naming convention do we want so we want the programmer naming convention because we have already used it in our scripts while writing c sharp and it will be very beneficial for us then on the next screen we're gonna keep all things at default and click on next all things on default and click on generate and it will generate the final things we need to get started so now bolt has finished its setup so i'm going to click on close to close this one and now let's get started coding with Bolt. So first of all, we're going to create a very simple scene. But before that, uh, let's say here inside my sprites folder, I have this simple monster. I'm going to simply drag and drop it here. And as you can see here, we have the monster. Now we're going to drag and drop this one. This is our platform. And I'm going to drag it somewhere like this. And then from the draw mode, I'm going to click on tiled. Then go to this rect selection tool and simply drag it to make it bigger so that our player has something to stand on now i'm going to go to add component physics 2d and i'm going to add a box collider 2d to our platform click on edit and then drag it to move it something like this and now our player will have something to stand upon so now we're going to select our player we're going to rename this one to player and we're going to go to add component bolt and we're going to add a flow machine so this flow machine is a set of graphs where which will decide how the codes will actually flow or how the program control will actually flow now we need to create a macro which is kind of a script inside which you will have the graphs you can simply click on new to create a new macro and here i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call it macros and inside this folder let's rename this macro to player so this will control the behavior of our player now you can simply click on edit graph to open it inside the graph window so as you can see here we have the flow graph window 
Now you can also go to this window from window and graph. As you can see, if you click here, you will see this graph window will be opened. We will need few more windows that we will set up later. So for now, I'm going to simply go ahead and dock the flow graph somewhere so that I can see how it is working. So I think I'm going to dock the flow graph right here. So I'm going to drag it and drop it right here beside my game tab. And I think I'm going to drag my game tab and dock it beside my scene view so that I can see the game view and the flow graph together. Okay. Now we need few more things to start working. We're going to go to window and click on this graph inspector, which will give us information about all the nodes that we use in bold. So if I click on graph inspector, as you can see, this comes here. I can simply go ahead and dock it somewhere. And now we need another thing. So what this graph inspector will do is let's say I click on this start. It will give us all the information about this start event. If I click on this update, it will give us all the information about this update event. All right. Now I can go to window and click on this variables tab and we can drag and drop it somewhere like this. So this variable from the variable tab, we can create new variables and use them in our visual script. Okay. Or in our graph. Okay. So now that we have done, we are done with the setup process. Let's actually start writing something. So here we have to start the start event, which gets called at the beginning of our game. And here we have the update event, which gets called every frame again and again and again. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to print something so that we can know that Bolt is actually running. So we're going to drag something from the start. And here we're going to simply write print. So we're going to search for this print command. So I can click on that. And as you can see here, we have the print node. So this node will help us to print something at the start. And what do we want to print? Here we need to pass the message that we want to print. So let's drag from message and create a new node. And here we're going to select this string literal because our message will be a string. And inside this string, let's write bolt is running so that whenever our game runs, it actually prints bolt is running. So now I'm going to click on play and see how this is working. And now as you can see, bolt is running is being printed on our console. Okay, so our very first code is actually running. Now you can go ahead and group this code together to keep them separate from everything. You can simply press control on your keyboard and drag your mouse wheel, drag your left mouse button actually like this to group all these things together. Now, as you can see, you can move all of them together. I'm going to simply rename them to, let's say, print start. Okay. so. This whole code, what it actually does is it actually prints something at the start. I can simply move it like this. Now, if you want to move freely inside the Bolt uh, flow graph window, you can simply press the middle mouse button. And by pressing the middle mouse button, you can simply move left and right up and down. You can scroll your mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And you can also double click to make it full screen. Okay. So now as you can see, our flow graph is full screen. Now let's do something more interesting. Now we're going to learn how we can click on this object to actually destroy it. Okay. So let's see how we can do that. To do that, first of all, here we need to create a new event. We're going to right click and go to this. You can either go to this events or here you can simply search for on mouse down. Okay. So as you can see here, we have the on mouse down event and it gets called automatically whenever something clicks on the object. Now, what do we want to do when the on mouse down happens? Let's drag a drag a node from here. And here we're going to say destroy. Okay. So we're going to destroy our game object. So we're going to destroy our game object. And here we need to pass what object we actually want to destroy. So we want to destroy the object itself. And for that, we need to create a simple self node. So here I'm going to drag it and search for self here and simply click on it. Okay. So now as you can see, whenever on mouse down happens or whenever we click on that object, it will simply destroy the self object. Okay. So this is the flow of this object. I'm going to double click to minimize it or I can simply click on this full screen to minimize it. Now let's click on play. So now with this code, whenever we click on the object, the object or the player should get destroyed. So let's see. So as you can see, I'm clicking on it, but it is not getting destroyed. And that's because currently we don't have a collider attached to the player. So let's select our player, go to add component, 
go to physics 2d and click on box collider 2d and you will see from the scene view here we have a box collider so i'm going to go to this edit to edit the collider make it a little bit short on this and now we have this collider attached to our object now if i click on play now you will see whenever i click on it as soon as i click on it the object gets destroyed that means this script or this code is actually working so we can again press ctrl and drag our left mouse button to group all these objects so i'm going to name this one to destroy on click okay so this thing whole this all these things does is destroys our object on click so i'm going to drag and drop it somewhere like this now let's learn some more interesting things now we're gonna learn how we can actually make the player jump when we press the space button for that i'm gonna go to our scene and add a rigid body component to our player because otherwise we cannot make the player jump and fall down rigid body will add a gravity to the player so let's select our player and from add component physics 2d we're gonna add a rigid body 2d component to our player okay so now when I click on play, you will see the player will fall down because of gravity. So as you can see, as soon as I click on play, the player falls down because of the gravity that we have here. Now we're gonna detect our key press and depending on our key press, we're gonna actually make the player jump. So first of all, here we're gonna create a new function. The name of the function is add force. And you need to make sure that you use this rigid body 2D.add force and not this rigid body.add force because this one is for 3D games and this one is for 2D. Because our project is 2D, so we're gonna use this 2D. And we're gonna also use this version of add force where we have this mode option so that we can change the mode. So we're gonna use this one. So click on it. So here's we have our rigid body 2D add force. Let's double click to zoom in it. Now what you're gonna do is whenever we press the space button on our keyboard we want to add some force to our rigid body so for that here we're gonna right click add unit and from here we need to say input dot get key okay and from there we need to from the key we need to select the space key so whenever the space key will be pressed this event will be true okay and whenever this event will be true what do we want to do we want to actually add some force to our rigid body so let's connect these two nodes like this and now we need to add some force to the rigid body whenever this thing happens and we also need to call this thing from our update so that we can check for key presses on every update frame so drag our update event and if you don't have an update event you can simply right click and search for update and create a new update now let's drag this and as you can see here we have our update event and when the update runs it will check for inputs and depending on the input it will add some force to the rigid body okay so now we need to say how much force we want to add okay so here as you can see we can mention how much force we can add so let's say in this case i add a force of 10 and now for the force mode we need to actually select impulse because that will make the force even more effective okay so in the force mode impulse we can add 10 force to the y axis as you can see the force has x and y both axis we can add some for add some force to the y axis so that our player actually moves upwards now this code will not work because we need to break it down to another thing after checking the input we need to drag it and here we need to go to controls and add a new branch so when we press input.get key and when this event actually becomes true then we're gonna actually do this okay so we need to add one branch so that this code actually works okay so now that we have done it as you can see the branch is still showing red that's because we have only connected the flow but we have not connected the value it is waiting for a value so we're gonna get the value of our key press that is space button and drag it here so now it has got the value and it will check if the value is true or false so if we have pressed the space button it will become true and it will go to this rigid body to denote and if it becomes false we don't want to do anything so we're gonna leave it like this so now that we have done everything let's double click to close it and go back to unity and click on play to check how it is working 
so here's our object i can click on space button and as you can see it jumps and it jumps too much higher so let's go and actually decrement the value of this uh, of this force now as you can see here we are attaching the value or adding the value directly but we can also add this value using a variable till now we have learned we have not learned how to create a variable so let's learn that now so from the graph variables tab if you don't have that you can go to window and click on graph variables let's click on here and create a new variable let's go i'm gonna name it force let's name it force and click click on plus to create a new variable and for the type i'm gonna choose float now i can drag and drop the variable right here and from here let's give it a value let's give it a value of 2 and now in place of the force i can simply drag and drop this one but this will not work because the force is a vector 2 and here we are adding only one value so we can either convert it to a vector 2 or we can simply go ahead and change the value to 2 directly from here so i just wanted to show you how to use a variable and that's what i have shown here but you can also reduce this step by directly adding the value here so now let's save this and go back to unity and click on play now you will see when i press the space button our player actually jumps and it comes down and it looks like our player is actually jumping now you can adjust the jump by adjusting the gravity so let's go to our player let's go to the rigid body gravity and change the gravity scale to something like 5 and change the force to something like let's say 10 and now if i click on play you will get a better behavior this time so here's our player and it still jumps a lot so i think we should give a much lower value all right so the problem is here we are actually taking the input from the input.get key i actually mistyped it so we need to actually use the input.get key down function and not get key click on it and right click click on replace and replace with get key down okay so now as you can see input.get key down is selected now it will give us a much better behavior so let's click on play and now you will see it jumps and this gives us a much better behavior this time so now that our jump code is working now we're going to learn how we can actually move our object left and right using keyboard inputs okay so let's get started so we can go to our flow graph and actually press control and take all of these things and rename this to jump okay and let's move it upwards now we're gonna move our player using the left and right keys on our keyboard for that we're gonna use the input dot get axis first of all get axis and for the axis name we're gonna write horizontal because we want to take input from the x negative and positive axis that's why we're going to use the horizontal then we need to get the value from the horizontal axis multiply it with a move speed value and then use that value to move our player using its own velocity okay so here we're going to create a new value and we're going to call it velocity and make sure to use the rigid body 2d.velocity and set property because we want to set the velocity so we want to set the velocity and what do we want to actually set the velocity to we want to set the velocity to the value of our input.get axis value and we're going to multiply it with the value of our move speed so here we're going to create a new variable we're going to call it move speed and we're going to set the type to float and let's give it a value of 0 0.5 for now and then drag our move speed right here now we need to multiply our move speed to the input.get axis value okay so let's drag a node from here and click on multiply and we're going to multiply our input.get axis value to this move speed value okay so now we are multiplying both of these objects or both of these values and then we are only getting the x value but this rigid body velocity actually accepts a vector 2 value so we need to convert this one to a vector 2 and only then we can use it 
So we're going to create a new vector 2. So you're going to call vector 2, new vector 2, new vector 2 x and y. So for the x value, we're going to add this value. And then you're going to drag and drop this value here. Okay, so we are getting the vector 2 value, but we also need the y value because we need to set the y value for the rigid body's velocity as well. Okay, so we are setting the x value to this value, but the y value needs to be set as well. So the y value should be the velocity y of the rigid body and it should not change. So the x value will be changed and the y value will not be changed. So for the y value, we're going to say velocity and we're going to get the rigid body to the velocity. As you can see from here, you can get the rigid body to the dot velocity. So from this velocity, we need to get only the y value. So we can drag it. And from here, we're going to say vector2, two, vector2.get. Two and we're going to get only the y value. So from here, we are getting only the y value of the velocity. And we're going to drag and drop the y directly here and connect it here. Now I have done one mistake, we don't need to connect this input to this rigid body because we're going to call this whole event from our fixed update event, okay? We can also call it from update but I prefer to use fixed update in this case. So here we need to create a new unit, we're going to call it fixed update and from the fixed update we can simply directly connect our rigid body. So now as you can see all these things lit up because all these things will actually work in this case. So let me break it down once again for you. So in our fixed update function, we are doing all these things. So what we're doing is, first of all, we are getting our input from the horizontal axis. We are taking the input from the horizontal axis, that is our x input. And we are multiplying our x input with the move speed value that we have got here. And we are setting the move speed value multiplied by input.get axis and we are setting it to our vector 2x and as you can see here we have the rigid body and need to set its velocity so we are first of all dividing it into two values so that we can get x and y value separately for the x value we are getting it from this input and for the y value we are keeping it same so for the y value we are getting our rigid body's velocity we're getting the y value of the rigid body's velocity and directly setting it up here so this way we are multiplying our input.get axis value to move speed and we are keeping our y velocity same and that's how we are setting our velocity to the rigid body every frame. So this is how the whole code works. So let's go to unity and check how this one is working then we can also change the value of our move speed. Now you will see I can simply press the x and y to move our object and it should move but I think the value is too low that's why it's not moving. We can also make the value 10. Let's make the value 10. And for the jump force, let's give it a higher value. Let's say 5. And now if I click on play, I will get a much better behavior this time. Here we have our player. I can move left and right. I can press jump to jump. I can also make the jump value give, I can give a higher value to the jump to jump even higher. And as you can see, it moves left and right and jumps. I think we need to give a higher value to the jump because this is not working. Where is our jump? Let's find it. Okay, so we are actually not using the variable. That's why this is not working. So for the jump force, let's give it, uh, let's say 20. Okay, so now click on play. And now you will see our player can move left and right. Our player can jump and all these things are working. All the code is working. So we know how to jump. We know how to move left and right. We know how to use variables, how to use these vectors. And as you can see, the flow is running because we are running it on the fixed update. And here we are running it in the update function. Okay, and we can also click the object to destroy it. We can click on it and as you can see, as soon as I click on it, it gets destroyed. So we have learned all these things in this video. Now these things might be a little confusing for you. These are a little confusing for me as well because we actually write this in scripts but in when we create it using graphs, it becomes a little bit confusing. But still, if you are new or if you prefer this method, you can use this because you can use this to prototype things quickly in some cases. You can also save this to reuse them again and again. Let's press Ctrl and drag and use all of them. And let's rename this one to our move horizontal. 
So this code is responsible for the horizontal movement in our game and we can use it to move our player left and right using any of these variables and use them as well. So this way we have learned how to actually use these functions in these flow graphs to actually code simple mechanics and behavior in our game. And as you can see, we have learned how to use variables, how to set up bold and all these things. So this is it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed learning this with me. So thank you so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this video and learned something, please hit the like button so that I can make more videos like this. And let me know in the comments which feature of Volt do you like most. And if you want many, any more tutorials on Volt, please write those in comments so that I can see it and I can make more videos on it. So thank you so much. I hope this video helped you to get started with Bolt and I'm going to see you in a new video tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe and stay connected and I'm going to see you soon.